Welcome again, First Lena, and good evening, my viewer. I'm so delighted that you managed to log in and view our video. Today, we are not only honored, we are very, very honored and very privileged to hold McLean Abubakra. McLean is a child psychologist. She's also a mental health champion. She's in Nawiri Wellness. McLean is very focal in terms of making your kid or your, 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 as they grow up, that they grow up as the mentally healthy people to make a healthy generation. Yes, as first trainers and especially in the first train cup section, we are really, really honored. McLean, feel welcome and the, all the first trainers are looking forward to hear from you. Thank you. And you can tell us Thank a you. little bit about you. Okay, so let me put this up and then uh, we get on with it. So like uh, Abundance has said, my name is Makrin Abuka. I'm a mental health champion. Um, I've been having conversations on matters mental wellness and general wellness for a long time now, since I went to school of, of psych. And my motivation for doing it is largely to help as many people as I possibly can to, to thrive in their lives, to prevent the onset of mental challenges and where they are already facing mental health challenges to be able to access you know, treatment on a timely basis. So that, that is broadly my motivation for engaging in these conversations on matters mental health. And tonight we are going to speak about the psychology of money. Mm -hmm. And you're going to look at how as parents, we affect our children's behaviors and attitudes towards money. So I think let's start unless uh, abundance has something else for us to say at this point. At this point, I just need to remind my viewer and my first trainer that abundance is a natural state for all of us. God created each and every one of us that we may enjoy abundance and we may enjoy, you know, everything that goes with abundance. And as parents, it's our assignment, I must admit, to make our kids understand that. Thank you, McLean. I'm sure you, by the end of this uh, talk, I'm sure we'll be able to be to know exactly what we need to do as parents. Yes, welcome. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So three key objectives for us to sort of cover today. Uh, I look at what is psychology broadly speaking, what are some factors that affect our behaviors, and then looking at how some of our behaviors as parents would affect our children's behaviors and attitudes towards money. Okay, so um, I just picked a few definitions here to give us a basis for this conversation. So when you talk about psychology, we are looking at our thoughts, our beliefs, and our actions, our behaviors that we engage in on a day-to-day -day basis. That really is what psychology is about. So when you look at it, we are, we are trying to see how do our thoughts affect our beliefs? How do our beliefs affect our thoughts and behaviors? How do our behaviors manifest our thoughts and beliefs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we take one of the leading voices in matter psychology, the association, the American Psychological Association, mm -hmm. they tell us that psychology is a study of how our mind works and how the workings of our minds affects our behaviors. So as we get into this conversation, we'll be looking at what are some of the thought processes that we engage in? What are some of the beliefs that we hold as parents? What are some of the practices that we, we participate in that affect how our children will eventually relate with money? Because my understanding is that this particular uh, conversation aims to empower people on matters, finance, personal finance. So yes. we're looking at it from the ground up. So the, the current audience is adults, and then the adults are influencing the lives of little ones in their sure. lives. And we are looking at 
how do we prepare them to be more responsible custodians of um, resources when they get to be of age, mm -hmm. right? So looking at how our thoughts, our beliefs, and our behavior shows up is one of the parts that would help to set them on a good trajectory on matters finance, okay? okay. So okay. having understood that we are looking at um, thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors, let's look at what are some of the things that affect our behaviors. If abundance wants to ask a question, I'm hearing something. No, I'm, I'm okay on this end. Oh, okay, sawa, sawa. Mm -hmm. So, some of the factors that would affect um, how we behave include our personal characteristics. So we are, we are all born unique in our own different ways. And in that uniqueness, there are things that are just about us and not like our sister, not like our brother, not like our parents. It's just unique to us given the combination of genes that we have. So we'll come with our own sort of innate belief systems. We'll adapt others along the way. We'll come with our own levels of knowledge. We'll come with our own general dispositions. Are we introverted? Are we extroverted? Are we, you know, um, more, you know, people facing less people? Are we energetic? Are we generally mellow? So those would be personal characteristics that we bring into play and which have a bearing on how we also end up relating with matters resources. Then we'll have interpersonal factors. And this speaks to the relationships and the things around the relationships that we engage with. So you find um, our, our social circles will affect how we show up on matters finance. If we hang out with people who are knowledgeable on matters personal finance, mm -hmm. chances are our levels of knowledge as individuals will also go up. If mm -hmm. we hang out with people who know little, you know, mm -hmm. other than the very, very basic, it is mm -hmm. highly likely that we will also be at that same level of knowledge. Mm -hmm. If we are hanging out with people with limited resources, yeah, and we are mm -hmm. looking to do big things, then those are people who are unlikely to help us in achieving those big things that we're looking to do. Mm -hmm. So it is important for us to really interrogate what are, what are the kind of interpersonal uh, resources that we are bringing into play for ourselves and for our children. You know, mm -hmm. what quality of relationships are we nurturing? You know, mm -hmm. what spiritual um, support networks do we have? You know, mm -hmm. and this speaks to all spiritual orientations. Because in interacting in our religious spaces, we will mm -hmm. also be interacting with persons. So it's important. It will affect how we show up. Because if you take like the Christian uh, leaning, you find that there are specific teachings from the Bible on matters, resource management. If you mm -hmm. take the Muslim faith, there are specific you know, scriptures that they have that speak to how they handle resources. You know, for example, the Muslims and charging of interest, that's a thing, mm -hmm. you see. So depending on what spiritual, um, social setup you are in, it will affect how you relate with, with the, you know, the resources mm -hmm. that speak to a personal financial status. Mm -hmm. We also have institutional um, players that we interact with, you know? So mm -hmm. here we are looking at employers, we are looking at learning institutions, we are looking at training mm -hmm. institutions, we are looking at the rules that those institutions confer to us. Mm -hmm. So for example, we have a university in this country, I will not mention them by name, mm -hmm. but they are known for having been very, very strict and very consistent on how the students dress up when mm -hmm. they're going to school. Mm -hmm. So from the very, very get-go, if you are a student mm -hmm. in that institution, you'd not go to school in jeans. You'd not mm -hmm. go to school in sports gear. You'd not go to school in shorts. Mm -hmm. Because they said they're a business school. Mm -hmm. 
So such rules within institutions will affect how one structures themselves with the resources that they have. And the resources we have are many. You know, we have the skills, we have the money, money equivalent, and those all those sort of things. So the institutions will define for us how we show up. There are institutions where if you're going to have an interaction with someone, you're expected to dress officially. And officially is defined as wearing a suit. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So for those of us who like to dress casually, you would not mm -hmm. fit in there very well. You know, If you want to meet a person who has been schooled in that kind of a background, and you showed up like Mark Zuckerberg, who's fairly easy in his dressing, you mm -hmm. may be dismissed for someone not serious. Whilst you actually have, you may have a lot to offer. So you also want to check what, where am I going to show up? What are the expectations of the engagements? And then how do I execute? Then you have the community, uh, you know, within which we're operating. The community also has its, um, its structures, it has the resources that are available. Um, some communities are more endowed than others. Where there's more endow endowment, then there's a tendency for you know, interacting with a wider range of sort of uh, financial um, um, assets and, and those kinds of things and even exploring more sophisticated investment options. Where there are fewer resources, you'll find that the interactions are fairly rudimentary. They are more of the trading kind than anything else, you know? And then of course, there'll also be the norms of engagement. So if you're in an environment that is, it frowns upon corrupt activities, then you'll find that you'll be structuring your, your projects to be straightforward. If you're in an environment that is easy about you know, corruption, mm -hmm. provided you have not been caught, then it's very easy for you to you know, set up your projects in ways that are looking to cut corners. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it really does matter. Mm -hmm. And because we are custodians of these kids and we are parts of these communities, we want to be very vigilant. What are we going to be portraying to these young ones, even as we try to empower them on matters, mm -hmm. finance. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have, um, for today's conversation, we have what the government of the day has in mm -hmm. terms of you know, rules and guidelines on matters, finance and finance management. Mm -hmm. And depending on the, the kind of framework that exists, there'll be different levels. For our Kenyan situation, we now have the national government, and then we have the county government, you know, and all of them have certain rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. They have certain laws. Uh, in terms of licenses, if you want to do businesses there, you may have to, you know, um, ensure compliance at different levels. So all these things we will speak to, how does one then show up in their mm -hmm. interaction with finances. So having talked about what is psychology, what affects behavior, broadly speaking, this is very broadly speaking, mm -hmm. I now want us to look at what are some of the things that as parents uh, we would be doing that will affect our children in how they now end up interacting with money and money equivalent, the assets that constitute our personal finance. And mm -hmm. this is not exhaustive. It's just, uh, you know, um, what I thought would be key for today's mm -hmm. conversation, right? Sure. So one, I'd say our attitudes as caregivers towards investments and the various investment options that exist. Mm -hmm. So some of us are open to the fact that there's a there's a wide range of investment options. Mm -hmm. And we are also cognizant that while there's a wide range of investment options, we prefer some and not others. And that's mm -hmm. fine. And then there are others amongst us who, uh, first of all, know very few investment options. And where we are made aware of other investment options, we, we position them in a very negative light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And often it's because we don't know much about them 
Uh, maybe we had tried to engage in them with the little knowledge we had and we had our fingers burned and now we want nothing to do with them. So if we have those kinds of attitudes towards the different investment options available, chances are we will confer those attitudes to our children. So even when they grow up and these are opportunities that they could exploit, they may avoid them to their detriment. So you want to just check how are you positioning yourself around investment options that are available to you and to the market at large, yeah? Then we have situations where we don't have much information about, you know, uh, the different investment options. So we have low or no education on these things. We just know, mm -hmm. yeah, if I get money, I'll start a business. And if I get a lot of money, I'll buy a piece of land. Mm -hmm. And if I get more money, I'll build rental houses. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like end of story. When it comes to other things, oh, shares or stocks or bonds or bills, you know, um, and options, mm -hmm. yeah, like <clears throat> those are things that we don't go there. Huh? Mm -hmm. But we don't go there, not because they are bad things, it's because we have little or no information and we are also not willing and ready to learn about them. True. Mm -hmm. And so we we'll miss out on those opportunities. We will also deny our children the opportunity to know about them early because there's also sure. this thing that is called compounding. If you know these things sure. early and you start doing these things as early as right you know now. them, then mm -hmm. you benefit from mm -hmm. the power of compounding. If you sure. deny yourself and you deny your children, then all oh, well, it's a loss, both to you and your children. The other mm -hmm. thing is making talking about money and things related a taboo topic. There are those of us who believe, and perhaps this is how we were raised, mm -hmm. that matters money we don't discuss with children. Those are adult topics. Hmm? <laughs> children so should true. say what they want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Children should just say what they want. You want books for school? Yes. You want snacks mm -hmm. for school? Okay. You want anything for school? Yes. Maybe you want a toy, perhaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, to Nachi Apple. Where I get money, how I get money should not be your business as a child. I think that is so wrong. It's because so wrong. What, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're trying to raise this child to be a, a responsible steward of their own money when they become mm -hmm. an adult. Mm -hmm. But you're not giving them an opportunity to learn early. Mm -hmm. so these are the people who are more likely to fall prey to pyramid schemes. You know? True. To those things of, oh, my friend Abundance told me that there's this thing and it's making people a lot of money mm -hmm. and she's made so much money. Let me put my money there. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone who's been schooled on matters personal finance mm -hmm. can tell when something is not consistent okay. with yeah. the principles of the principles of financial engagement. So you want mm -hmm. to make talking about money mm -hmm. a very easy conversation, you know? Sure. Then, in relation to that, is we sometimes want to shield our children from the realities of life, perhaps in the hope of preventing them from experiencing pain, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's not helping them. It's like keeping your child from being infected. Your child, mm -hmm. when they're exposed to infection, they build immunity. And mm -hmm. so later when infections come, they're able to withstand it. So too with matters personal finance. You want to expose them to examples, good examples, failed mm -hmm. examples, neutral mm -hmm. examples. Mm -hmm. you know? Let them know. Start with yourself. What are some mistakes sure. that you have made yourself around money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about those stories. Mm -hmm. When I was at this point in my life, I did this mm -hmm. and this and this. These were the lessons I learned positive lessons. These mm -hmm. are the negative lessons I learned. This is what I will not do ever again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these children grew up knowing that uh, failing is part of life and that mm -hmm. the people that they love have also failed and they have learned from their failures. And then there are other people out there that have also been successful, perhaps even more successful than ourselves, and we look up to them. And they too can look up to other people. 
who are successful. So we are teaching them a lot of lessons in that like one stroke. You know, that we mm -hmm. are not all knowing, that we are not we are not perfect, yeah, mm -hmm. that there are other people that are able to do as well as us or even better than us. Some we work with them together and we bring in a lot of synergy. So you want to expose your children to these kinds of examples. Right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you want to role model. So you want your child to be a responsible steward of money and the resources that you give them. Can you model to them what that looks like? Yeah. Let them know. When I receive quantity X of money, this is how I'm using it. You know, I'm apportioning A to paying rent or to paying mortgage, B to fueling, and this is where I fuel. If there's a discount that I get on fuel, that's what I do. I shopping, I buy wholesale, and this is how much I then save. And these are the things I buy, you know, on the fly every day because otherwise I get bad. You know, this is how much I'm putting into investment, and these are the investments that I'm putting my money into. Mm -hmm. When the investments pay, this is how you know. Show them the dividend checks if you have dividends. Mm -hmm. You know, show them the the money that comes in from bonds. Those mm -hmm. payouts that come every quarter, you know, show them mm -hmm. or every half of the year, show them, sure. let them mm -hmm. see, yeah? let them see you doing those things that you say are the actions of good stewards of money. Let them see you making mistakes too, yeah? because True. you make mistakes. You make yeah. mistakes, you know, you take True. money and you give somebody, you give a friend and then the friendship goes sideways. Because mm -hmm. now you took the money which was supposed to be for something very important and the friend promised and the friend failed. So let mm -hmm. your children know that those are things that potentially can bring relationships down. Sure. Yeah, And you don't give out money that you're not ready to lose. Model. Sure. Huh? Mm -hmm. Say no to excessive us. If you're mm -hmm. not saying no to excessive us, they will not know how to say no themselves. True. Yeah. <laughs> The other thing is, uh, are you giving them opportunities to practice this personal mm -hmm. finance related thing? So depending on their developmental stage, when they're still very young, you possibly just want them to know what money is to identify. This is five shillings, this is 10 shillings, this is 20 shillings, 100, and 1,000 is more valuable than 10 bob, you know? Mm -hmm. So start from there. As they grow older, when they start demanding for snacks to go to school, mm -hmm. go with them to the supermarket, let them see the prices. Yeah, They grow a little older, you already know how much you're spending on snacks, give them the money, go with them to the supermarket, let mm -hmm. them buy. If they buy snacks and they finish their snacks by Tuesday and you mm -hmm. give the money for snacks from Faka Friday, let them mm -hmm. go without snacks until Friday. They will learn the lesson. <laughs> money doesn't just come because you're asking for it, you know? It True. comes in a structured way. You have to plan for it. And if you don't plan for it, there mm -hmm. are consequences. Practice yeah. opportunities. If they True. don't get those opportunities, mm -hmm. they'll be the children. You go into the supermarket, you start by buying for them crisps for 20 bob. Mm -hmm. And then now they want crisps for 50 bob. Then they want Pringles. No mm -hmm. offense to Pringles. Very nice, very neat, and also very pricey. Mm -hmm. Then they get to teenage. Now they don't want crisps. Now they want other things that are impressionable according to the ages that they are in with their peers. Mm -hmm. You know, they mm -hmm. want branded this and branded that. You buy sure. them a, a smartphone and they tell you they don't want that phone yeah? mm -hmm. because their friends don't. They want a phone for 100,000. <laughs> they think it's dumb. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you already got them into the habit of getting what they want. You see, you nurtured mm -hmm. the animal and now it's coming back to bite you. So you want to get them into the practice that mm -hmm. will bring the, you know, the things that are sustainable for them and for you. Sure. Aya, moving on to the next one. Are you an affirming parent? You know, mm -hmm. affirmation is about acknowledging what your child is experiencing, whether you agree or not. Mm -hmm. So they say they are, they are hurting, eh? even mm -hmm. though it looks like it was just like a small thing. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge that they're in pain. Hmm? Mm -hmm. They say they lost their money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're feeling pain for having lost their money. Okay, Paulie. Hmm? Feel mm -hmm. the pain with them and then allow them to live the consequences of not being careful with their resources. With their money. Mm -hmm. you know? 
maybe yeah maybe they want to use their money for something other than what you think would be the best use for their money so the example i gave you've given mm-hmm. them pocket money which you believe is enough for them to buy snacks for a week i'm talking about a day scholar here mm-hmm. so maybe you buy them snacks of 100 bob per day so 500 should be enough for monday to friday mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. and the snacks that you're thinking of maybe it's fruits maybe yogurt you know the things that you've been buying mm-hmm. but when you give them money they mm-hmm. decide Mm-mm, they don't want to buy those things mommy has been buying or daddy has been buying mm-hmm. they want to buy other things that are more exotic hmm? they go they buy <laughs> a bar of chocolate yeah <laughs> they buy a bar of chocolate that is almost a hundred bob hmm? uh-huh. i mean you don't you don't find that to be an optimal use of their money but that is what they want if they're gonna buy for themselves a bar of chocolate for the week and they're not you're not going to give them any more money mm-hmm. all good maybe they're rewarding themselves who knows so you want to acknowledge that they may have different tastes than yourself maybe you don't mm-hmm. even fancy chocolates yourself mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. of us grew up and we discovered chocolates after we got to true. college true <laughs> having grown in the village true <laughs> so and this these little ones we've exposed them to these things they watch a lot of tv so they see they mm-hmm. may be aspirational you know so you want to affirm them in their different aspirations you want to acknowledge that they are different and different is not necessarily bad it is just different hmm? you want juice i want yogurt for now no problem mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we want to emphasize difference is not badness Bad. yes it is just different yeah and if it is not sustainable Mm-hmm. with the passage of time you will figure it out because that comes in the practice point that we talked about earlier if you're practicing things that are not sustainable you will mm-hmm. figure it out fairly soon because it's not going to give you the goals that you wanted sure. okay then another point scarcity versus growth mindset mm-hmm. some of us grew up hey our time is running out okay 10 minutes yeah so running out. I think some of need... us grew up yeah. Some of us grew up in very needy uh, environment. Mm-hmm. Not that we chose, that is the life that we were given. So mm-hmm. we struggled growing up. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we now at least have some. But some of us are still in that scarcity space. So even though we have money, we are, we are thinking we may go back to that state of not having and we mm-hmm. fear. So mm-hmm. we just hold, they ask you for anything. No, you think money grows on trees. You just have that one thing until it is Imeisha, Imeisha, Imeisha. That's when you replace it. Mm-hmm. You don't want that. You know. You want to approach life from a growth mindset. Appreciate where you came from and appreciate that you now have. And then give yourself quality within a sustainable model. And mm-hmm. model the same thing for your kid. True. So if they, if they ask you for a branded thing, it, you shouldn't just be the parent who's always saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> there should be some space for, okay, perhaps. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll have one designer pair of shoes and then the other is Zile Zakawida. Ujuaji. We don't mm-hmm. know everything. Let's accept we don't know everything. Where we don't know, we seek consultation. Let mm-hmm. our children see us seeking consultation mm-hmm. so that they know that asking is not weakness. It is actually sure. a matter of strength. Sure. Yeah? Sure. Oh, yeah. I think, uh, well, this one's really talk about one of them. What are your attitudes as a parent? Hmm? Do you lack so much that you now want to spoil them to be You're just mm-hmm. giving them excessively? If you do that, then it will boomerang on you. At some point, you will not be able to meet their, their level of greed and they will mm-hmm. be unhappy with you for that matter. Mm-hmm. You may have grown up with this charity mindset. Nothing bad with giving, but you need to give with a plan. Don't give to mm-hmm. a point where now you're subordinating your children and not a family where mm-hmm. the parents were so generous. Mm-hmm. Guests would come and then the kids would now just eat mboga and the guests eat nyama until they, they, they were now not liking guests because mm-hmm. they just knew when visitors come, our quality of life is degraded. You don't want to do those things. Mm -hmm. You want to do it within some level of reason. Mm -hmm. You don't want to also subordinate your needs. 
because you want to to help other people that's problematic you also mm -hmm. don't want to be a penny pincher so much that you know when they ask for something they feel like they are making a mistake for asking mm -hmm. they should feel free to ask on occasion they get what they want on some occasion they're told to wait on some occasions they're told you no know, and all those things are okay yeah mm -hmm. there needs to be a standard for what is enough what mm -hmm. is enough you cannot be the kind of person who is just always looking for more and more and more and more to the point of breaking all rules possible these are the people who will engage in corrupt activities because it's never enough. You know, they get a million, they want 10. They get 10, they want 100. They get 100, they want, you know. Mm -hmm. And they want it not in a sustainable way. If you're doing legit business, no problem. But if you're doing it because you just don't feel you have enough, then that's problematic. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Thank you, thank you so, so much, McLean. It feels like if a, a parent listening to this conversation, there should be a change in mindset and a, a, a better change. In our conversations now going forward, I want to believe they're going to, to change totally in our dinner tables and in our schools. And whenever we are as parents, that we may influence that positivity and grow a better generation. Thank you. I see you have a, an event. Yes. Yeah, let me, uh, based on time, I think I'll post it on my, allow me to post it on my socials. Tower, thanks. Thank you so, so much. I think at this point we'll stop and thank you so much, uh, McLean. It's such an honor, I must admit. Thank you. Thank you too.